this video we look at virtualization. Now what is virtualization? Virtualization is the ability to create something that's not real. For example, if you have a Windows XP computer at home and you want to learn Windows Vista or do something on Windows Vista, you would have to go out and buy a Windows Vista PC. What if you wanted to learn Unix? You could probably use a program like Sigwin, as we showed in a previous video of how to install Sigwin to practice Unix on Windows. But what if you wanted to use real Unix, like Linux perhaps? You would have to buy a Linux PC. What if, uh, what if you wanted to learn Solaris Unix? or FreeBSD, or even Windows Server 2008. As you could see, each of these computers, the cost would add up, not to mention your electricity bill and uh, your air condition will perhaps be running all day long. So this is a difficult and expensive thing to learn and hence one of the reasons many people just give up on computers or at least a career path in computers if they haven't been to a university. For example, an e-machine will run you $2.99 for the cheapest one. Maybe $3.99 is a more reasonable practical amount. And as you can see, this adds up fast. What if there was a piece of software that allowed you to trick the operating system into thinking that different parts of the software represented a computer in its own right? That's exactly what virtualization does. It fools the computer into believing that it could run multiple operating systems. Remember, operating system is a special program that controls the hardware of the computer. Let's go ahead and download uh, a virtualization software. For this, we could open a browser, Internet Explorer, or Firefox, whichever you prefer. And in your favorite search engine or Google, let's search for virtual box. It's a free virtualization software from Sun Microsystems and pretty straightforward and easy to use. So let's say download virtual box and we should be able to find a download site. This should take us directly to Sun Microsystems. And here we want to choose one for Windows and save the file for later. Once it's finished downloading, simply double click it as any other program and install it. Let's go ahead and close our browser. And I had downloaded this previously, so let's see if we still have it. And if we don't, we could simply wait for this copy to finish downloading. And if I double click on this, it'll start the installation. Do you want to run this file? And I say yes, and the installer begins. Let's go ahead and close these windows. Now once the installer starts, you hit next and I already have VirtualBox installed so it doesn't give me a button to say install. It gives me a, a button that says repair or remove. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel this. And I would advise you to download VirtualBox and try it out 
If you were able to do this, you could follow along as I teach the different methods to install Windows XP, Windows Vista, Linux, Solaris, FreeBSD, all these being Unix. And if you don't like VirtualBox, there's another virtualization software called VMware or Zen, but those are more complex and hence useful and tends to be harder to learn on. So go ahead and try it out and let me go ahead and open up my VirtualBox installation that's already in place. Once you install and open the VirtualBox program, you need to create a virtual machine. Now on the left side here, we see items labeled CentOS, OpenSolaris, and OpenSUSE. These are all virtual machines. They're pretending to be computers in their own right. When you download for the first time, this slide will be completely empty. It's necessary to click on New, click on Next, type in the name of the type of operating system you wish to install. In my case, I will type Windows XP. And I'll go ahead and choose the XP type, Next. I will choose the default amount of memory. Notice it says no hard drive. If this was a real computer, I would have to go out and purchase a hard drive, but I could just say create a virtual one. I'm going to choose a dynamically expanding one. I could change the size or accept the default and hit finish. And now there's a virtual one created for me. And then I hit finish and it should put it over here. Now I have a free new PC. All I have to do is hit start and it starts up. If I wanted to do another one, I come over here. Let's say we wanted to create a Unix machine. FreeBSD is a popular Unix. Go ahead and select the type. FreeBSD. Now, notice this is the type. I'm calling the name this, but I could call it anything. I could call it Unix Box 7 and so on. And hit Next. And again, choose how much memory and so on. Now, when you're ready, you could just hit Start. And notice it created several virtual components, a virtual floppy, a virtual speaker, and so on. Once you hit start, it starts up with this virtual console. And it should give you some information at first, tells you where the flop is and so on. One important thing to remember, once you click inside of the virtual machine, I'm currently moving my mouse. Notice you don't see the mouse. If I click the right control button on the keyboard, you see the mouse again. That's called capturing the mouse. The virtual machine captures the mouse and captures the keyboard in order for your actions to go towards the virtual machine. In order to get out of it, you click the right control button. So let's go ahead and right now it says no bootable medium found. That's because there's no operating system. This is like turning on a new computer from the store that didn't have a hard drive or didn't have an operating system installed. In upcoming videos, we'll go ahead and load different operating systems in here. So I'm going to go ahead and close this, power off virtual machine, and close this program. Now, I hope you understand virtualization. If not, you may want to Google it, look at this video again, or send me an email. Good luck.